it's Mr. Slope Guy here today to talk about Pythagorean Theorem, going over the basics of the Pythagorean Theorem. And the Pythagorean Theorem, it expresses the relationship among the sides of a right triangle. So we're not talking about angles, we're talking about the side lengths. And we're not just talking about any triangle, we are talking about right triangles. And a right triangle is in one which one of the angles is 90 degrees. So you have to have a 90 degree angle in your right triangle for it to be the Pythagorean Theorem. So the two sides which come together and form the right angle are the triangle's legs. And the length of the legs are called A and B. The side across from the right angle is called the hypotenuse. It's the longest side. It's always directly across from the 90 degree angle. And we normally label the hypotenuse with a C. For hypotenuse, to remember that word, we want to try to picture a high pot that 10 people are trying to use. High pot 10 use. I want to use it. 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 Picture a high pot that 10 people are trying to use. High pot to noose. And we're going to label the hypotenuse C. So the legs are interchangeable. They can be A and B, but the long side, the side straight across from that 90 degree angle, we have to label that with a C. And we, when we have legs of A and B, and a hypotenuse of C, the Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Not A plus B equals C, but A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Another way of thinking of this is we have two legs and a hypotenuse. We could think of it as being leg squared plus the other leg squared would be the hypotenuse squared. But since we normally label the legs A and B and the hypotenuse C, most of the time you'll see the Pythagorean theorem as A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But it is true that it's both the legs, each squared, added together, equaling the hypotenuse squared. So let's see a number of examples. So let's say we have this right triangle. We notice right away the long side, the side opposite the 90 degree angle is 25. And the legs are 7 and 24. They're the sides connected to the 90 degree angle. So if we want to put this into the Pythagorean theorem, this long side has to be the C value. So we're going to start every problem in this unit by writing down the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we're going to substitute in. The 25 has to be the C. The other two are interchangeable. So get that 25 in for C, so 25 squared. Then one of the legs squared is 7, 24 squared would equal 25 squared. And let's do the math and see how that works out. Well, 7 squared is 49. 24 squared is 576. 25 squared is 625. And if I add 49 and 576 together, I get 625. So since both sides of the equation are equal, we know that the triangle is a right triangle. We just proved it's a right triangle because it worked in the Pythagorean theorem. So the first thing we can use the Pythagorean theorem for is to tell, do we have a right triangle? And in this case, because 625 equals 625, we know that this triangle is indeed a right triangle. So you guys try these two problems. We have a triangle with side lengths at 20, 21, 29, and a second triangle of 7, 8, and 9. So put both of those into the Pythagorean theorem, see if both sides are equal to see if you have two right triangles. So pause the video here, and then we'll come back and talk about them. All right, welcome, welcome back. Let's try that first one with 20, 21, 29. So we can do 20 squared plus 21 squared equal 29 squared. 20 squared is 400. 21 squared, 441. 29 squared, 841. And if I add 400 and 441 together, I get 841. And 841 does equal 841. So yes, this one is a right triangle. That is true, a right triangle. Let's try the other one with 7, 8, 9. Put that in the Pythagorean theorem. I have 7 squared plus 8 squared equals 9 squared. 7 squared is 49. 
8 squared 64, and 9 squared 81. If I add 49 and 64 together, I get 113, and 113 does not equal 81, so this is not a right triangle. So these are kind of yes-no answers. It either worked in the Pythagorean theorem where we do have a right triangle, or no, it did not work in the Pythagorean theorem, so we do not have a right triangle. One confusing thing about this is, is the hypotenuse always the last number given? Well, it was the last number here, it was the last number here, but it is not always the last number given. So no, it's not always the last number, but it is always the largest number. So if you're given three numbers, the largest number has to be the hypotenuse, has to be the C value. So be careful when you look at the order, it's not always the last number, but it is always the largest. So you can use the Pythagorean theorem to tell if you have a right triangle. That's our first use of the Pythagorean theorem. The second use we're going to talk about today is um, using the formula to find one of the sides of a triangle when we know the other two. So if I know A and B, I can find C, or if I know B and C, I can find A. So given any two of the sides, we can find the third side using the equation A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right, so let's take a look at what one of those problems will look like. So let's say we're missing the hypotenuse, we're missing the long side, the side opposite of the right angle, which means the two legs are 6 and 8. They're always connected by the right angle. And it doesn't matter which one's A or B, but this one, the C, has to be the missing side. So start every problem with writing A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Substitute our two legs in, 6 and 8, for A and B in either order. Our C is the missing side, the hypotenuse. Then I could do 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64. Add 36 and 64 together, I get 100. Now that's 100 equals C squared. That's not equal to C. So to get from C squared to just C, what I could do is I could take the square root of both sides because the square root of C squared is C, and that's what we're solving for, not C squared, but C. And then I could take the square root of 100, and that's one of the ones I could do in my head because I know 10 times 10 is 100. So C squared is C, the square root of 100 is 10. So this missing side, the hypotenuse is 10. All right, you guys ready to try one on your own? Pause the video here and see if you can find the length of the hypotenuse. All right, welcome back. We're going to start every problem with writing the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This one we know we're missing the C. The 5 and the 3 can be A and B in either order. I can have 5 squared plus 3 squared or 3 squared plus 5 squared. Either way will be fine. C squared, the C has to be the missing number. 5 squared is 25. 3 squared is 9. 25 plus 9 is 34, and this doesn't come out to be a pretty perfect square, so I'm going to want to use my calculator to take the square root of 34. Square root of c squared is c. The square root of 34, 5.83. And when it sends round to the nearest hundredth, that's like rounding to the nearest penny, like 5.83 or 5 and 83 hundredths. So our missing hypotenuse, 5.83. Well, what if we have the hypotenuse, but we're missing one of the sides? So if we look at the 90 degree angle, we look straight across that long side is 15. The 15 has to be the C value. So when I put in the Pythagorean theorem, 15 has to go in for the C. Now, since they labeled A as one of the sides, we'll use A for our variable. So they gave us the B value of 12. So put that directly in the Pythagorean theorem. 12 squared is 144, 15 squared is 225. Now my steps to solve this one are a little bit different. To isolate the A, I want to subtract 144 from each side. That'll get the A squared by itself on the left side. On the right side, 225 minus 144 is 81. Oh, this one comes out to be a perfect square because I know eight, 9 times 9 is 81. A squared is A, so my missing length my missing side, my missing leg is 9. All right, you guys ready to try one where they gave you the hypotenuse and you need to find the missing leg. All right, substitute in, pause the video here, and find the missing leg. 
All right, welcome back. That 10 has to go in for the C value. That is the hypotenuse. So 10 has to go here. Since they use B for the variable, probably that is a variable. And the other leg is 5. 5 squared is 25. 10 squared is 100. Subtract 25 from each side. B squared would equal 75. We are not done. We are not just solving for B squared. We're solving for B. So we need want to take the square root of the left side, square root of the right side. And when I put in my calculator, the square root is 75. And we're rounding again to the nearest hundredth, 8.66. So my missing leg, 8.66. And you're always going to want to check your units if you're given feet, meters, yards. If you're given any type of unit, you're going to make sure you have that unit listed. And since we're just finding how long it is, it's not in units squared, it's just in plain units. And I hope that gets you guys all started with the Pythagorean Theorem. Have a great day. O-U-T spells out.